Eugene, good to see you. Welcome to Pop Turn, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, PD. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> we're talking about the code, you know, going to be playing at the Fantasia Film Festival this year. I mean, I have a general kind of question because I am a really big fan of, of your work, and I'm really excited to chat with you about this. But specifically, you can answer this with a code or other projects. I mean, you know, anyone that's kind of followed your films knows that you have a very unique way of storytelling right the way you kind of film things and i'm just wondering mm -hmm. early on from for yourself as becoming a filmmaker was it just i want to make movies or was it i want to make movies with unique perspectives like, i'm curious if, if that was a thing early on in your career uh yeah i think i just always wanted to make movies like uh i got obsessed with movies and so you just start watching movies you start watching like uh i don't know <laughs> citizen kane or boogie nights or train spotting or something you say oh my god this is so inspiring this is so cool this makes me feel alive or like there's a bigger world out there than what i live and then one day i think inevitably you say oh i could try to say something but then of course when you have the impulse to say something you want to do it i think in a in a way that's different than what you see yep. because why would you want to make the same images that you see and so, yeah, really early on, even when I was like a teenager, I was kind of obsessed with like split screens and stuff and figuring out different perspectives uh, on the same event and on the same kind of uh, moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with the rise of the Internet and the rise of uh, screens and phones and social media, I realized that that was a very interesting visual conduit into understanding multiple things at the same time and mm -hmm. into making new types of cinematic images. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've spent the last almost 20 years kind of um, trying to synthesize and explore um, like how you can make cinematic new images out of, um, you know, the, 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 the kind of computer and internet and social media screens that we're all used to in our daily lives. Yeah. I find it very interesting with this film because this film is not like a horror film or everything, but the kind of topic of like surveillance and being watched yeah. and everything is always scary, right? And, you know, it's premiering at Fantasia Film Festival and a lot of horror films, yeah. you know, premiere at this yeah. festival. I'm just curious early on if that was also always kind of a little bit of kind of a thought or narrative, well, the fact that it's not a horror film, but kind of these kind of like, you know, uh, ways you're filming it and these topics have to do with that genre a lot. Did, did that come into yeah. play, like a, tie, like a push and pull a little bit? Yeah, so ever since um, with my second movie that I was making, kind of when I was finishing my first movie, Zeros and Ones, my second movie is called Skydiver. Yep. And it's all Skype and Gchat video conversations. And basically, I play this character who turns into like a incel domestic terror kind of before yeah. they even like coined those terms in cell and stuff it's like 2010 um and i've always been kind of fascinated with um different types of found footage but that aren't related to horror but, but most people's like um you know connection to found footage is horror so if you can take that those uh, signifiers and those kind of connections people have to that genre or that mm -hmm. format and then explore you know romance or humor or thrills but not in a horror way through it I think that's fascinating. It seems I'm kind of like trying to make deals for people, you know, for yeah. viewers. Like, let's make a deal. Like you've never seen like a found footage movie. That's a rom-com. I want to yes. try that out. Like that could be fun. Why hasn't anybody tried that? But I was a you bit know? uncomfortable watching it. If I'm going to be honest no, with you. Sure. <laughs> no, but that's good. But that's yeah. good because you bring your own kind of baggage to, to it. And of course we should all interrogate surveillance. Like you're yeah. saying, like, 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 you know, remember when all the Cambridge Analytica shit happened and every, and they were taking like Facebook on trial for like selling information and yeah. stuff. I was like, what do you guys expect? We spent the last like 10 years being like, hey, look at what I'm eating. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what happened to me. And then they were like, OK, we are looking and we're actually going to use it to try to sell you shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Like, and that's kind of was one of the um, impetuses for this film. One of the motivators was like, hey, we should just recognize that we're all completely like signed off on this uh, perpetual surveillance yep. you know and uh, how could that seem ridiculous and scary and funny in the context of a relationship you know no, very well said um and then i do want to ask because you know one of your films is one of my favorite films of all time and actually kind oh. of like inspired me for films i have a short film um that just got on the screen fest for our la premiere horror film called joining and there's a little bit of kind of inspiration of Spree in that film as oh, well. Cool. I have to say Spree is one of my favorite films of all time. Like that movie oh, wow. is so good. Um, Thanks, I talked man. to David Arquette about it. Um, oh, yeah. I just kind of want to ask you a little bit like, what was it like? Because I mean, Joe Curie is like 
Yeah. It's one of the best performances. Like, I think it's one of the most like not t- like underrated performances ever of a movie in general. Like, it's so Thank good. You. So, what was that yeah, like working with him on that film? It was amazing. Uh, Joe's an amazing actor. I mean, everybody on that, David and Sashir and uh, Kyle Mooney and all of them were so fun and great to work with. But Joe is uh, Joe's a really unique talent, one of a kind talent. Um, he um, took it really seriously, um, and that's a special thing to do when a movie is supposed to be, you know, fun and funny. And, um, you know, I think we cracked, uh, for lack of a better expression, we cracked the code when I kind of made it clear to him that uh, that character was supposed to be a helper. That yeah. character viewed himself as a kind of, you know, uh, someone who's out there to help others. And then just the, the form of social media basically uh, dispenses with morality. And so combining those two instincts of like, I'm here to help people. And the conclusion I've come to is that I'm going to show them how to go viral by killing people is, um, is like the sickness of our, of our time encapsulated in one character. And uh, Joe being able to pull that off in a way that was like, you know, compelling and creepy, funny and scary is a testament to his his range and his instincts. And Do you consider it a horror movie. film, Eugene, from your perspective? Uh, I consider it a comedic film that has horrific dimensions. Okay. And I, I don't think there's a ton of jump scares in it, okay. but I think, it, I think it's it, like my favorite filmmakers, for instance, like Paul Verhoeven, you watch the movie, you sit down, hopefully you just go through the ride mm-hmm. and enjoy it and experience it. And then later, you can think about what it means. Like, I don't need people sitting there being, oh, this is about this or that or the other thing. And um, I think if you think about that movie later, it has a kind of horrific dimensions. For sure. You know? I love that movie. So good. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I think for The Code, what I tried to do yeah. is take some of the concepts of Spree, you know, as yeah. a live stream movie. Yes. And kind of apply that to what I thought was a kind of stale genre, which is the mockumentary on one side and found footage on the other side. I was like, how can I apply the because the, now the thing about um spree is it's not just found footage it is a live stream yes. that is being run by you know joe's character kurt right most so of the, the film is a live stream absolutely yes yeah so the character is the filmmaker yeah and i thought that's a fascinating approach and so for the new film i did the same thing and i call it diegetic cinema yep. where the characters themselves are the filmmakers yep um and so yeah i wanted to explore that further and i wanted to go be on live stream in this film right one of the main preoccupations is the edit how do you foreground the the editing process so that an audience considers the sort of narrative narrative destabilization that editing creates because even this video this conversation we're going to have is going to be edited right everything we see in the news everything we see in social media has an editorial imprint Mm -hmm. that changes our understanding of it completely so i just wanted the film to explore that as we were making our jokes and and, and stuff and one last quick question about the code before we wrap up. We're going to be able to see sure. the Fantasia Film Festival. I mean, you know, PVT Chat was a film that Peter and Dasha were both in, right? Which I uh-huh. kind of like reminds me a little bit, like just the like the just some of like because it's about like technology and everything. And I'm just wondering, not necessarily about that film, but like, what are those conversations like with Peter and Dasha, knowing that like they've done something that could be like that similar? You know what I mean? In the past, like, I'm just curious about that. Oh yeah, I'm not like. Um just for lack of time and not interest, I actually haven't seen that, yeah. but, um, but I know it's good. I mean, I've heard really good things about the film. Um, it's very different. Like it's not code at all, but it's just kind of, yeah. there's some kind of like, it has to do with like internet and everything. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't, I, the only conversations I had with, you know, Peter and Dasha are just about their characters and what motivates them um, and what their backstory is, right? Because mm-hmm. there's important things you find out about both of them kind of through different stages of the film. But at the beginning, um, you don't really understand why their relationship is so broken beyond, you know, there's a kind of like a sexual frustration yeah. and a sexual dead end kind of thing. And um, just kind of having that knowledge ahead of time for both of them and teasing out why they're motivated to fit, why Dosh is making the documentary for real, as opposed to the projection of it. Or why Peter can't, you know, um, be sexually intimate for real, as opposed to all of his excuses, is the most important thing, you know, that we discussed yep. um, um, as collaborators. And then, you know, and then uh, after that, it's just kind of uh, working it out moment to moment to make sure we have the funniest possible uh, deliveries yeah. and stuff. No, it was, um, it was but yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried. I know this movie is. Um, 
its own thing. I don't think there's another movie out there like it. So that's the best. I, uh, it's great. No, I love. <laughs> I, just, Fantasia, I, I can't wait. People are gonna love it at Fantasia Film Festival this year in Montreal. Yeah, it's yeah, be great. yeah. Um, hey, thanks very much, Eugene. Thank you so much for your time. It was really great chatting with you. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.